impressive Dragonborn. He was kind of normal, standard, but also a very offshoot as kind of uh, offshoot like guy. Um, he wasn't very popular with everybody because he always was a very big pessimist. Um, growing up was very hard for him, but he had a companion that he had throughout the entirety of it. You know, another hatchling that had grown up with him essentially. Um, Aramir. Eremir was his rock and everything, his best friend. Um, as they grew up, um, they did everything together until the day that they were uh, drafted into the military. Heliod's army. So one day, um, Drakthalmar and Eremir were essentially drafted into a special forces unit that caused them to kind of separate and deviate from the path that they were on originally. You know, they had hoped to, you know, stay through that pretty much their entire time. Um, when that happened, Aramir got some surprising news that he was going to become one of the very few, but very new, airborne riders. Um, they would also be known as the Death from Above squad. Letting him know that um, Aramir's uh, squad was picked to do a reconnaissance mission on a neighboring um, unfriendly military force. Um, so Aramir had invited him over to get drinks um, at the local tavern. Once Aramir had broken that message to him, he Drekthalmar felt almost as if something wasn't right. Like, why would why would a brand new squad of young airborne paladin wyvern riders have this you know such a huge task well get the feeling that something was wrong you know something didn't feel right well finally came the day that they were given their orders and they left to go do the reconnaissance um it was supposed to be a week long endeavor well unfortunately a few weeks went by and after the week mark had passed Drek Falmar took his post on the watchtower and he didn't leave he wouldn't eat he wouldn't drink he wouldn't do anything until um Aramir came and a few weeks go by and Aramir's presence was still not to be seen nobody has seen anything about anyone from the squad finally um just at the break of dawn, you could see a pair of wings flying, and it was almost as if there was something wrong, like like they weren't feeling good, like they could have been injured or something like that. You know, Drak Falmar uh, told the uh, the the leader of the the guard chief to raise the alarm. And, you know, the bell started tolling and then everybody had started opening up the gates, getting ready to, you know, to receive the airborne uh, Paladin Wyvern Riders. And it was just one. And when he had landed, excuse me, uh, he was covered in blood and his armor was completely tattered and it looked like hell. Drek Falmar comes rushing over to this uh, young Paladin Rider and he goes... Where's Aramir? Where's Aramir? And the paladin rider looks at him. Aramir didn't make it. Aramir distracted the leading generals just to give me just enough time to get away. And he gave me this key to give you. And he said that there was something there. He says, what is this key to? Well, the paladin rider says it's to a stable, but I don't know much more than that. Finally, he gets to the stable where he sees nothing. It's just, you know, the normal stable, but then he walks over closer toward his um, fallen brother's wyvern's nest. Come to find out that there was an egg left over. He hears his voice in his head that says, I am Tiamat. I am the god of all dragons. I am the god most powerful of all. So before we move on, I need a 
a good description of what Drac Falmar looks like. Well, Drac Falmar, being in his in his state as of right now, Drac Falmar has very small human-like features. Drac Falmar has longer hair, like any humanoid person would have, but that in mind half of his face is very draconic half of his face is very human like half of his face being more toward his eye area and what I'm describing looks very rep reptilious um, he has you know very th small slinted eyes um, scales you know just at the just at the brim of his eyes um, scaling all down his neck. He has a very a half human, half draconic like jaw. Um, his teeth are very draconic, but his mouth shape, um, besides having a little bit, you know, wider lips, um, looks very humanoid. Okay. Um, as you get down over toward his, um, past his neck, it's pretty much dragon. Um, it's scaly, um, you know, you really can't tell much of the distinctions besides he's very muscular. Um, he roughly is about six foot, six foot five, six foot seven, um, weighs roughly about 275 pounds. Um, he's very lean, um, over toward his elbow area. He has one spike that comes out, but it's not very, you know, defined because as you get older, your spikes grow. Um, he's not that old, so, you know, his spikes are still very small. Um, and how old is he? He's roughly, I want to say, about the age of 24. Okay. He's, he's 24, almost 24. Um, but in, uh, in Dragonborn tradition, it's not really the age. It's more or less the wisdom. Uh, that you are as you grow you know you, you grow more powerful because you know dragonborn are very um, they're, they're known for their wisdom they're known for their power they're known for their um, military usage um, so he's they're not not very old but he's getting there all right all right so we have your description. We have your backstory. There was one part that you left out, and it's at the very end. As you were walking away from the platoon commander or the, or the captain, you had tipped over a torch, and you actually started a fire in the war, or in, in the encampment within Heliod's castle, within his city. So as you take a few steps out, Everyone starts to gather. Flames start roaring up high. They start going. Uh, smoke starts filling the city. And you're the only one acting calm. You've got this armor that was this... It was this rather nice, shiny steel armor with uh, a glorious spear-like emblem that's no longer there. Uh, one thing... Uh, another thing to me worth mentioning is the fact that you're also... A red dragonborn correct yes this is correct so in also some of your heated passion some of your hatred um, you know you fire started kind of falling out your mouth you, you started just angrily spitting at the armor and you've actually charred parts of it pitch black um, and because you have this charring along your armor people are just assuming he's calm he has burn marks He's a red dragon. He clearly set this fire. So they have the proper units going in their opposite directions. You've picked up on the fact that, oh, I'm going to be chased. So you start rushing through the city. As you're rushing through, you already have your weapons, but you didn't have the egg quite yet with you when talking to the captain. But you had it in a safe place nearby. You rush through, you grab it, and you start running through the city. You're going through crowded streets, you're going through alleyways, tunnels, sewer systems, and they're hot on your feet. Everyone knows the system pretty well. Everyone knows this city, just outside of uh, Heliod's castle, being in their military, always have to know how to protect it. Well, unfortunately for them, 
you're just a little bit quicker, and you were on tower duty, you were on that guard duty, you're fresh off the block. You know exactly where to go, and you know exactly where you fit. So you get out just in the nick of time. You make it outside of the city limits, and you think to yourself, the current tactics that they're teaching us in this army, they're going to follow this trail all the way down. If I stay on this trail, I'm bound to get caught. One man, one dragonborn, even with the gift of Tiamat, she's not going to allow a whole army to swarm me and she's going to help protect me. It's not her style. This is a goddess of greed and power. And if you ain't powerful, she has no reason for you. So you decide to go smart. About 50 feet to your to your left is this thick bush, this thick tree line that is just ripe for the hiding. So you go rushing through. You break through the tree line, and as you look back, you see all the patrols start rushing down that trail. You know you did the right thing. But then in your, hear, in your head, you hear a sound. You hear a voice. A coward? You brush it off. Not cowardly. Tactical. You keep rushing into the forest, figuring the further you get in, the harder it is to find you. And then you hear the voice again. Enough, you coward! And it shocks you to your core. That voice was Tiamat. You just had a conversation with her. There's no way. She's already talking to you again. And you stop, and you take a look around, and you sit down, clutching your egg tightly. All the emotion rushing back that your brother just died. All the emotion of you have officially betrayed the country and the, and the warlord that you and your brother swore to protect. You're now realizing all of the betrayals that you just committed. And all you're thinking is, I did the right thing. This is absolutely their fault. They sent him to his death. And the voice comes back. They may have sent him to his death, but he didn't run from fate. I will not have a fat, I will not have a coward in my ranks. You better have a way to explain yourself. And in that moment, you're taken aback. It sounds like she just disavowed you immediately. And then it feels like something just punched you square in the chest with the weight of a thousand bricks. Just knocks you out. And then oddly enough, you see your body. You're still sitting on the floor, hunched over the egg, motionless, and you can see this. So in that moment of confusion, you start flying faster than the light, faster than sound. As you're flying through the air, you're going through mountains, you're going through trees, through buildings, people. With each passing obstacle, you're putting your hands up thinking you're about to crash hard. You have no idea why, you have no idea how this is happening. And before you know it, you're in a pitch black void. And before you, it's a very dim tor torchlight. And it's making out this weird great light shape, almost like a jail cell. And you hear the voice. You hear Tiamat again. I bring you to my presence, and you stand there. I quickly choose to actually no I stand there and then I ask does someone of power bend a knee even to the one of the greatest most powerful deities you are not power yet whelp it doesn't matter. If I want to have power, I have to act as though I as though I have it now. If I sit there and cower now, everything you just said is true. I will stand in front of you and accept that I will bend no knee to anyone. From the dim torchlight and this cage appears a very human looking woman figure. 
long jet black hair, porcelain skin. And as she gets closer, you see this raging red, yellow blended eye. She comes up, she comes marching up to you with this meanest scowl. You're not bending your knee, but damn if you ain't pissing your pants. So you're holding true. And it clicks. This is her humanoid form. This is what she wants to show you. This is, because it's not going to be all of her power. And she even says, even in this limited form, even with this limited scope of what I can do, my one little finger is enough to eviscerate you from the face of this world. And you wish to stand? If I'm here... Roll constitution. That's a D what? D20. Your knees are shaking. You're not, you're still not bowing down. You are kind of hunched over a little bit. Mildly, it's a mild defeatist kind of vibe. Because it's one of those, her weight is just bearing down on you. Her power is so pressure. It, You're doing everything you can just to stand up. But you stay standing. What were you saying? Even though your pinky could completely eviscerate me, it wouldn't eliminate the pain that I feel in my heart. I can't bend my will ever again until I have the power to destroy those who are responsible. I understand that you are all-powerful and I understand that you are my only way to secure that fact. But I will not show weakness never again. I will do anything that you ask except for bend my knee until the day that I can kill the one responsible. Turns, I will bend my knee then. She turns her nose up at you and just harumps. Hmm. You know, if your friend was as strong-willed as you, he may still yet live. Do not talk about Aramir. Oh. You think you can stand before me and then dictate how your goddess speaks to you? I will not have my goddess speak ill of my brother. And what makes him so special? He just is. Just he, is. He was always there. Everyone shunned me. Everyone treated me like an outsider. Nobody cared about who Drac Falmar was. But Aramir did. Nobody gave a flying shit about who I was until Aramir was there. If it weren't for Aramir, I would not be standing here with any kind of power. No matter how little he was there to show me the error of my original ways. He showed me that if it weren't for his light in my darkness, I would just end up as a street rat. Part of anything. Nothing would be afforded to me. No power, no strength, no will, so no sense of direction. Very well. Understand. You're barely a hatchling. And you speak so big to someone like me. Words oh, aren't you, a battle. No, you don't speak now. I will keep my eye on you. But understand young, scaled warrior. 
Because until I decide you are that of a dragon, that's all you will be. She looks past you. And then you look around. It's it's all black void. There's nothing around you. She's clearly looking at something. Oh, good. They found you. She turns and begins to walk away. And as that happens, you are then instantly sucked back through all that space that you went through before. And you jolt awake. Still clutching your eggs, still perfectly fine. You feel no damage. But then you look around. And there's Heliod's guards. A bunch of them. Just dead. They're just. I mean, there's half of one over there. There's an arm to another one that's. Oh, there he is up in the tree. Yeah, no. He's dead. Guts strewn about. Blood everywhere. What the hell happened? About time you woke up. You look behind you. And there standing. You wish you were standing. Sitting. Is a behemoth of a dragonborn. Wearing. He's sitting down. In almost the size of about half of a tree. Oh shit. Beside him is a massive hammer the size of which the hammer itself about the same size as, as your torso no, a little bit bigger he stands about ten and a half feet tall he looks at you with the most dead black eyes his scales as dark as the void you just came from matching his armor but on his shoulder on one of his pauldrons is a small golden rose with exactly five thorns and he looks around and says are you two done playing games he's awake now let's finish what we came here for and he starts to walk towards you with each step. Not quite snappy sounding, but with each step, a thud. Earth shaking beneath you. Roll another constitution save. 18. Well, it sure shit ain't Tia met. And you stood your ground to her. You stand up, you put the egg behind you, and you stand tall, and you look at him square in the, square in the face. Well, belly button. <laughs> and you... You take it from here. I'm not going to speak for you. Who you, are you, and what do you want? He just continues to glare at you. And another voice comes around. <laughs> this one's got spunk. <laughs> Oh, he's smart. I mean, he's really stupid to stand up to you, but he's smart. I say to him, I will not ask again, and I draw my greatsword. Speak. How are you holding your sword right now? I'm holding my sword... point it downwards slam it into the ground like this I do not lean on that weapon for as I know as a knight in training that putting any kind of weight on it somebody could kick that weapon kick that weapon from under me and cause me to fall so I put it down toward the ground but not in the ground ready to pick it up like this to slice at him in case he tries to attack. I have my weapon at the ready. He sees us and smirks. 
And he's still staring at you. The big one's just staring. Why don't you give me an insight check? Insight check? Yep. What do I need? D what? It's a D20. I mean, 13. He's, so. Okay. So. You say that, and he's smirking. He just. He's got the cheesiest, big ass, hulking smile on his face. And. He's on. He's not threatening you. He left his. He left his warhammer all the way over there. And granted, it's two steps away for him, but it's like fifty for you. With his size. But the the wiry dragonborn comes around, and that's what I was speaking earlier. He says, Oh yeah, he's drawing his weapon on you. <laughs> oh, this is no, you're gonna hurt him. You're gonna hurt him. Enough. He looks back at you and says, Stand still. And he just reaches up and just grabs the collar of your armor. And he grips tightly and you hear the metal buckle under his fingers. And he tells you, if you move, this is going to hurt a lot. If you're strong like she says you are, stand still. one foul swoop he rips your breastplate clean off taking your sword with it because you weren't putting any weight on it so you're standing perfectly still but he rips it off and your sword goes flying your armor is officially in shreds it's it looks like it was paper in his hands another shadowy figure comes around uh, another tree this one looking more like a normal dragonborn. And we got one that's super scrawny, skinny, and really wiry. You have this Hulk, and then you have something normal. Normal. Because fantasy. <laughs> normal is a matter of perspective in this one. I mean, but we've, he got, comes... we've got the Hulk, and then we have Schmeagol. Uh What do we got next? Well, next we have one that is a lot like you, except... He's blue scaled. He's a blue scaled dragon, but he's walking around and he's carrying what looks like clothes and weapons. All pitch black. And all of them with a white rose with exactly five thorns on them. I'm picking up what that uh, white rose with five rose well, with five thorns on it is. Blue scale takes a takes a once over on you. He's not saying anything. He just drops it right in front of you. Speaks to the whole thing monstrosity and says, if "That's all. I'm leaving." And he goes to walk away. Big guy turns to you and says, You will not defile our goddess by wearing someone else's brand. And you're useless with broken armor. Kicks it over to you. That's all you need. Don't worry. We already took payment for this little house visit. And then him and the little one go to walk away. The little one turns back before officially leaving. Hmm. If you want to hurt Heliod, go after his patrollers. <laughs> they went south. The way they go. And now you're left there. With nothing more than a simple chainmail like shirt, which is also torn to shreds because his fingers know, know the difference. An egg, a busted sword, and your brand new scale mail black armor. What do you do from here? Well, 
Um, I guess the only most natural thing to do is put on the armor. After you put the armor on, you're taking another look over at yourself and seeing this is it. This is absolutely it. You know for a fact you're not on the same playing field as those three that just walked away. Although, Blue definitely has your number and you got his. Because while, yeah, big guy may have uh, threatened you or seemed threatening, Blue was absolutely disrespectful. And then Schmeagle is Schmeagle, like you said. Um... And you're kind of feeling it over and, and you feel your rose. It's not... It's weird. You have a massive rose on your chest plate. Freaking the big guy, his was on his shoulder. The little one was on his collar. And you didn't see where the third guy's was. And before you know it, it's, yeah, you, got some, you got some looking into. You first you've ever known about some rose and it seems to have some importance you knew who they were talking about when he, when they said she clearly they're talking about Tiamat these are all dragonborn they're all clearly bad guys I mean yeah um but where do you want to go from here then well I want to get back at Heliod you're going to go south with all the patrollers. So then you're going to head south. And that's where we're going to end this opening scene. So, in this story so far, you've had your face-to-face -face with your goddess. You stood your ground to your goddess, which pissed her off. And you're not sure how, but word got around real quick that... Uh, you know, 20 minutes ago, you betrayed your god to go for his sister, and they're bringing you armor. But you're heading south. You're heading towards a uh, town called the Crossroads of Power. It's actually, it's a fairly well-known area in Heliod's uh, domain. The Crossroads of Power is a town that no one's able to touch. Patrols go through there all the time, um, but no warlord's able to take it over. Because the second one moves on it, an army comes after them. And the second an army comes after them, here comes another army. This town actually has its own level of protection. It, no one really knows how it happens, but they just have like the best of the best mercenaries living nearby. And they do everything to protect their town. It's also home to some of the finest drinks you'll find. So, that's going to be something that I'm sure one of our players is going to find amusing. Hmm. If not all of you. But you're going to a major trade city that no one's allowed to take over. Heliod has no uh, has no control. None of the other warlords have domain. It's a fairly open town. So it's like neutral ground, like no man's land, pretty much. Okay. So this is it for Acid and Drakamar. Next up, he will be convening with our other two playable characters and we'll see how that goes I'm looking forward to it so this is Froiki Acid hit like share and subscribe and we'll see y'all in the next tabletop game